Welcome back to Just Scribble for an unboxing slash share slash planner review of the 2024 Take a Note planners. So I did order two of the planners directly from Take a Note when their website is really easy to navigate and they also offered some bundle deals on their website for their pre-order of their planners with some covers. So I did order two of the three sizes from Take a Note directly, but then I had this brilliant idea or what I hope is a brilliant idea for the third size. So I went on Yoseka's website and I actually had ordered the third size from Yoseka. So I'm gonna take everything out of the packaging so it's not so loud and then we will check out all three planner sizes and the other things that I ordered directly from Take a Note. Okay, so I took everything out of the packaging, but I still have the plastic sleeves on there, so I'll have to take those off as we unbox. But I thought before we actually open up the planners, the first thing that we could do is actually unbox the other things that I added to my orders. So this is what I ordered from Yoseka. I ordered the A6 size from Yoseka Stationery, and then I ordered their B6, which is a new size to them, and A5 directly from take a note with some covers. So let's check out the Yoseka add-ons first. So I did get some freebie stickers with their logo and their store name on there. And then I got a little planner card that has a whole bunch of 2024 planners. These are all Hobonichi planners. And then a little note on the back from Gordon that just says, I hope you enjoy your new planner. And then when I was ordering, I added a pencil board in a six size from Hobonichi. I don't have a lot of A6 pencil boards, and I wanted to, and I wanted to have a pencil board in my A6 Wonderland 222 that I use for social media. So I ordered, I'm just making a big mess of this. Let's just cut this open. So I ordered an A6 pencil board. I didn't want anything that had a whole lot of decor or pictures or anything like that on it. I just wanted the basic simple pencil board and I liked the sort of purpley navy color and the pink of this one. So it just says today there so when you have it in your book it will stick out. This is a 2023 take a note but if you had it in your book regardless of whether you bought the week size a5 size or a6 size of the pencil board it would stick out like that and say today so you can use it sort of as a page marker as well. And then it has little dots on there so you can use it for marking things. It has a grid and then a sort of measurement there, but no numbers. And then the back is plain without the grid. Just a simple pencil board. I just really like the Hobonichi pencil boards. I actually buy pencil boards from a bunch of different places. I like all of them, but theirs are really, really thin and I like the little today that sticks out there. So it's perfect for my social media planner. So that is what that's for. And then the extras that I ordered from Take a Note, let's move the planners out of the way. I got their little freebie card that says the most important kind of freedom is to be what you really are. And on the back, it has the 2023 calendar on there. And you can use this as a page marker or tip in your planner, decor for your planner. I'm not sure actually why we got a 2023 one in the past. I've gotten the year that this relates to, but those might actually be in the planner themselves. And then I did decide this year they had these new covers and these are a canvas cover with a craft paper that's like a fabric inside of it. So it's a washable canvas craft paper book cover. And they come in all three sizes, A6, B6, and A5. And they come in a few different colors. So you could get them in black, caramel, misty blue, and misty white. So the black and the white or misty white, and then the misty blue, and then the caramel. I decided to get the black in A6 size and then the misty white, which is really sort of a gray color in the B6 and A5 size. I have sewn with this washable craft paper before, and I also really like canvas products. I especially like waxed canvas. This isn't waxed canvas, but I really like the materials that these are made out of, and so I thought that they would be a fun addition to my planner covers. And I have a lot of journals in these sizes, and so I thought I could use them on my journals or on planners. But this is the black one. My kiddo is making a snack in the other room, and he's being very loud. And then on the inside, it just has slip pockets where you can slip your planner in there or your journal. And then it has a little bookmark there 
and a little card slot there. Super simple, but they're sewn really, really nice. It's like a collab with another company. I really like it. So I got the black and the A6. And then the B6 and the A5, I got the misty white, or what I'm calling the gray. I just love the simplicity of these. Oh, I lost focus for a second. I love the simplicity of these. I think they're so pretty. So the design is the same regardless of the size, but you can see the size difference. I feel like it's not focusing. Well done. Okay, I think that's better. It was like stuck in non-focus. But there you can see the size difference between the three and the design is the same. It's just, you know, different colors. So I ordered those, but really the star of the show is the planners. So let me take the plastic off of all of these boxes and we will check out each one. So the A6 and the A5 size come in their hard boxes, just like they have in the past. This will be my I think my third year to use take a note planners. So I used a take a note in 2022 as my work planner. And then I used it this year for the first uh, four months of the year as my work planner. But then I had been promoted and my job changed. So the take a note planner, as much as I adore this planner, didn't work for me anymore for work. But I think it is a fabulous, especially the A5 size, is a fabulous work planner. I think that it's actually fabulous for a lot of reasons. But this will be my third year using take a note planners. So this is the A5 and the A6 and they come in these boxes. And then the B6 size is new this year and it comes in a different style box that just kind of folds over and closes in the back. It's still really thick and you could use it to store your planner when you archive it, but it's not in the hard sort of gift box style that these two are in. So the boxes do have these straps on them, like these ribbons on them, to help you get the box open and get your planner out of them. I'm gonna just open them up real quick. See, we did get those cards for 2024. Let's take off the tissue paper. There's even more wrapping inside, so I have to unwrap the actual planners themselves as well. I don't mind that. I love the amount of care that's put into the packaging. And then to open up the B6 size, you just open up the little box like that. I think the new Sterling Ink packaging is similar to this. And then you have this sort of like gift box that folds over it that you can then use to store it in. They have the years on them, which I really appreciate the years on the front of these as well. So when you go to archive, you know which year they are because it says it on the outside of the box. So you don't have to open up the box to see the planner inside and figure that out. So the A5 planner comes in an English version and a Taiwanese version. The A6 comes in a Taiwanese version, no English version. And then the B6 is a Taiwanese version as well. The B6 comes in this sort of brown, like craft papery color. And then these come for 2024 in this sort of slate blue color. Whereas in the prior year, they were in these like green, sort of deep green colors. So this was the cover for 2023, and this is the cover for 2024. The difference in the English and the Taiwanese version is on the print on the front. In the Taiwanese version, it is in black, whereas in the English version, it's in this sort of copper foil color. And that was the same case in 2023. So in the A6 and the A5 Taiwanese version, the year here and their logo and the size, they were in black print, whereas in the English version, it was in this copper foiled print. And so that's going to be the same case as well. So if you ordered one and you aren't sure on the A5 size, whether you got the English or the Taiwanese, the color here 
tells you which one you got. And really the main difference is that inside the Taiwanese version, so the A6 and the Taiwanese version of the A5, you have the Taiwanese holidays. In the B6 and the English version of the A5, you don't have Taiwanese holidays. That's really the biggest difference. With all three of them, we got little thank you cards that just say thank you, share with, and their hashtag, I'll put all of that down below. It's just a little business card. So I got two that match my A5 and A6 planners, and then one that matches my B6 planner. And then with all three, I got the freedom cards. It once again says the most important kind of freedom is to be what you really are. Two different sizes, so a smaller size for the A6 and the B6, and then a larger size for the A5. You could laminate these and use them as a page marker, like a book marker, and it would be great because the A5 size, as you can see kind of here, it would stick out and the A6 size would stick out. The B6 would not stick out, but you could just stick it up there. But they'd be great to laminate and use these bookmarks because on the back just like that 2023 one that I showed they have the calendar for the year so you have a quick reference calendar on there and this year they're printed in this blue and I lost the one where it is for 2023 they were in yellow I can't remember what color 2022 was but you can definitely see that in my videos I do have a playlist for take a note planners share previous unboxings and plan with me's flip throughs all that kind of stuff and so i will put a link to that in the cards up above but i will also put a link to that in the description box because i know sometimes it's hard to get back to it from the cards that way you guys can check out all my videos on these planners because i love these planners and in this video we're not going to flip through any of my previous planners to show you how i've used them my boys are getting ready to go outside and carve pumpkins and a cold front has come in. So even though it was like 85 this morning, it's actually going to be 40 degrees tomorrow. So they are getting hoodies and all that kind of stuff to go out and finish carving pumpkins. So there might be a little bit of background noise as they get situated because they've been outside and they're coming back in. While they make a little bit of noise, I'm going to take the plastic off of these. And hopefully by the time I get that done, we'll be ready to film without the noise. Okay, I think everyone's going outside, the dogs and all, so hopefully we'll have some quiet filming time. On your packaging, it will have a sticker that designates which planner you got. So the A5 is a regular planner in their schedule style. The A6 is called mini, and then the B6 is called medium. It is not a schedule style. It is what they call a weekly planner. And then on the stickers, it's kind of hard to see. It actually tells you the order of the pages in your planner. So it says welcome page, yearly calendar, yearly plan, yearly project, monthly plan, weekly plan, and then note page slash information page. That's what it says on these two. And then the B6 one says welcome page, yearly calendar, yearly plan, yearly project, monthly plan, weekly plan, note page slash personal info. So that kind of gives you the order of the pages in their planner on the little sticker. I think the stack looks so cute stacked like this with the color variation. Okay, so like I said, this is A6, B6, and A5. The B6 tan one is a different style than these two. It is also a it is also new for 2024. It also has a different cover. So these covers look just like they have always have. If it's Taiwanese, it's black. And if it's English version, it has foiling, but they're very simple and plain and just have the year and the size and then their little logo on it. Whereas the B6 size has this sort of impressed 2024 it's probably kind of hard to pick up on camera but the year is sort of impressed in there so it has a 2024 and then it has the size here in medium and take a note all in that copper foil so we're going to start with these two because these two are the ones that have been around i have shared these a few times because i really really love this planner brand i love the aesthetic i just love everything about it i have actually i don't think ever shared actually the A6 size on my channel. I did actually buy one for 2023. Not sure if I shared it or not, I cannot remember. But I did pull out the 2023 and set it somewhere so that we can talk about how I'm going to be using this for the rest of the year and also to do a comparison between the 2023 and 2024 versions. So the layout in the two of these are going to be identical. This one is just half the size 
of this one because it is a six and a six is half the size of a five. So if you put another a six here, that makes an a five size. So if you open them up and we will go through the layout, but if you open them up, you can see the size difference there as well, but the layout is exactly the same. So let's start with the A5 size. So you start with your, what they call a welcome page, a little intro page that's sort of attached to your first little cardstock page. You have your yearly calendar. They put your current year larger here with a Monday start, your prior year, just the prior four months, and then your future year, just the future four months. I actually appreciate that because I don't ever go and look back to the prior year in my current year planner and I don't go farther than a month or two forward in my current year planner. So I really only focus on this current year, the year of the planner, so I don't need all those other years and it kind of wastes space I think. And then this is their yearly plan section. So it has the months down there, then it has the date of the week across and the day of the week across. Monday through Friday are in sort of a charcoal print throughout the whole planner. It's a sort of charcoal gray color on the blue side of gray. And then Saturday and Sunday are always in a tannish brown color and Sunday is bolded. And so it has two little sections here. And I haven't used these pages very often because I've been using these as my work planner and it wasn't really a very functional space for me. Like I didn't have a real need to use this. I do work a pretty consistent work schedule, so I didn't need it to track my work schedule, but you could definitely use this to track your days on and off of work. You could use this to track your holidays and your vacation. So you could use the first row as your holidays for your company throughout the year and then the second row to track your vacation throughout the year if you were not using this for work and you were using this for wellness or a journal or your personal planner you could use this to track habits and so you could pick the two top priority habits that you have and you could write them here on these little lines and then you could use these to mark when you've met those habits you could also use this for kiddo school schedules or your husband's work schedule there's lots of things you could use them for it's just limited to tracking like two different things after that you go to your yearly project this is very similar to like what a hobonichi cousin has so it has the month up here and then it has a blank space here i really like this because you could use this as a like focus for your month or a word of the month you could use it for like your best thing that happened during the month and then you have your date down the side and then the day of the week down the side same color differentiations and then you have all of these grids across here and then this blank grid section here so you could use this for so many things this could be where you track your habits and so you could list your habits here like down in the little column sections and then you could use this to track your habits with a symbol or a dot marker you could use this as your sleep tracker so you could number your hours of sleep here and then you could plot out your sleep and you could have a sleep tracker you could use this as a step tracker you could use it as a weight tracker you could use it for important dates and holidays birthdays anniversaries things like that you could use it as an index for things within your planner especially if you were using this as a journal you could use this as an index so you could quickly and easily find things you wanted to go back and refer to you could use this for your weather tracking i think weather tracking like this is better than just tracking on your weekly because then you can see trends for the month you could use this section down here for goals you could divide it into the months and you could use it for a photo a month if this was your health and wellness journal you could take a photo every single month and see how you've changed for weight loss so many things you can use these pages for but you get three months per page and so the full year goes over four pages and then after that you go into your monthly i love the monthly and the take a note planner i love the cleanness and the aesthetic i love that monday through friday is this sort of gray color and saturday and sunday is brown in my planners when i've used it i've actually drawn a brown line with a mild liner down here to further def to further differentiate the work week from the weekend because I did use this as my work planner. And so I just liked aesthetically how that looked. You have lots of space to write. There's enough space at the top of every month to write the name of the holiday. Like for Christmas holiday, you could put Christmas there. You do have grid to write into your monthlies so you can write straight, which is awesome. 
you have these sections here that you could use to write goals for that week or to track projects for that week or something important for that specific week. Or you could use this as a sidebar. The same thing here. I usually use this section for decor, but you could definitely use this for writing. And then you also have this sidebar over here. And when you go into the months of the actual year, because this is obviously 2023, when you move into the 2024 months, it actually has the page number reference for the weekly spread of that week. So if we went to March and I wanted to quickly find the weekly page that had St. Patrick's Day, I could go to page 80. And if I go to page 80 here, automatically go to the weekly spread that has that date on it. And you can easily find your information. And you could use this section here for the weekly priorities or the goals for that week or to make notes about that week and reference back to here. So I think that's a really neat feature that they have the page number to easily find things within your planner so that you could use this to kind of index as well because you could very easily find things within your planner. But they do have all the months at the start. So you have all the months of the year through the end of the year and then you get three forward months for forward planning. In my personal planner situation and like a health and wellness, I wouldn't need that. In a work planner, that's actually very, very helpful. So depending on how you plan, you may find that, that very, very helpful. And then after that, you go into your weekly spreads. This year, 2024, January 1st is a Monday. So there's no December 2023 days in here. It starts the very first week of January, which starts on the first of the year. So on their weekly pages, it is a week on four page spread. And they do have the month at the top with the year. They have your little monthly calendar there. I, as you guys know, don't like these, but theirs is very, very small. So it's very easy for me to cover this up with a decorative sticker or some washi. So it doesn't bother me as much because it doesn't take up so much space. And then they have a weekly overview section here that has the day of the week and the date. And a little bit of a darker line sort of in the center of it so you could divide this in half you could use this for different things so if this was your everything planner you could put personal events on this side and work events on this side you could do all of your things all of your husband's things lots of different ways you could do that and then it's so faintly dark you could just use the box all the way across which is what i have historically done and then your daily is a half of a page so instead of a full page per day you get a half a page per day it does have some grid space at the top for priority and then it has your timeline in military time or 24 hour time. And then it has some grid at the bottom that you can also use. And then your 12 to one, your normal sort of lunch hour is shaded across the days. I actually saw someone doing an unboxing and they were very bothered about this shading, but they were using this planner for 2023 as well. And it's shaded in 2023 as well. If you can see there's shading for the lunch hour in the prior planner as well. I think that because they changed their, um, I think because they changed the color of their print a little bit, it's just a little bit more obvious because the grid is a little clearer. So before we go any farther, let me show you a comparison. But the, overall the planner hasn't really changed, but if you can see that, hopefully you can see it clearly, they have made the grid a little bit darker, which I actually really like. I really like the darkness of this grid. It is not super, super dark, which I appreciate, but it's easy to see and a little bit, oops, and a little bit easier to see than their past versions. So I'm really excited about that. So it's still gray, but it was more of a brown taupey gray. And now it's a more of a blue gray. And I think it just pops a little bit better, which I like. It does have the moon phases still, as you can see, and it still has the shading. It's just that the shading is a little bit easier to see in the 2024 version. That's really the primary change between the two is the font color and the like darkness of the grid. So you get half a page for each day and that continues until the end of the week. And then your weekends, just like on your monthlies and the yearly pages are in brown. So even the grid is in brown. So your weekdays are in this charcoal gray and then your weekends are in brown. That is one of the aesthetic things I just really love about this planner. I just, I just love this planner. And it continues like that for the whole year. There are, as you can see, little index markings to help you find the month that you're in or to place tabs. If you place tabs in your planner, it makes it really easy to place your tabs. And then it will go till the end of the year. 
and you'll get a couple days into January because December ends on a Tuesday. So you'll get to the end of that first week of January because that had the last week of December, if that makes sense. And then after that, you just get a couple of grid pages, like four grid pages. There's not that many grid pages. That is one of the things that I know a lot of people don't like about this planner, but I also know it's a thing that people do like about this planner because it depends on what you're using this planner for. Not everyone needs a daily page if you're getting half a page per day and you're still getting your horizontal overview of the week. So you don't really need all of those extra pages. And if you're using this for a work planner, you may use a different notebook for notes or a reference binder or digital or something like that. And if you're using this as your journal, you have plenty of pages up here. So I know not everybody needs a lot of extra pages in the back. So I like the simplicity, but it's enough pages that you can do a pen test or you can keep some reference information back there. And then the very last page has a place for your name and your contact information so that someone can find you if you misplace your planner. So that is the planner and how it's set up for the A5 and the A6 size, it's the same. Now this is the English version, like I said, so there are no holidays in here because they don't put any of the Taiwanese holidays in here and they don't put the English holidays in here. That way it can work for any country, no matter where you're at and everything is in English, as you can see. So the little A6 is the same setup. I mean, exactly the same, the months, and then the weeks, which are a week on four pages. It's just smaller. So if you look at the month, that's the month size difference between the A5 and the A6. And then if you go to a week, That is the week size difference between the A5 and the A6. And the only other difference between size is that the Taiwanese holidays are on the Taiwanese version. So even in the A5, it would have in their Taiwanese version, they would have the Taiwanese holidays, but they are so light and nondescript, doesn't bother me at all. You can still see the days of the week in English, just as you can over here. It's just that they're abbreviated here and they're full words here. It's a smaller planner. And then on the weeklies, it's still written in English there, just as it is on here. It's just that you also have some Taiwanese on there. But once again, it is so small and nondescript, doesn't bother me at all. So I don't really think it matters whether you get the English or the non-English version because the information is the same and there's English throughout either way. So it doesn't really make a difference. But this is the A6 version. And like I said, it's exactly the same, no difference from the A5 version. So before we get into the B6, I thought I would talk to you about why I ordered these. So I ordered the A5 with the intention of using this as my journal for 2024. I don't know that that's going to happen because I did share my Haru planner. I'm so excited about, and that is going to be my wellness planner that I'm going to journal in daily. And I don't think that I can commit to journaling in two journal planners in one year. I had actually pre-ordered this before I had decided to use the Haru horizontal planner for my wellness journal. And so I ordered this and then it came and then the Haru came in between. And I think the Haru is a much better fit for me for a wellness planner because of some of the trackers and other things that are in it. So I don't actually have a purpose for this planner. I'm not using this as my work planner in 2024 because I'm using the Franklin daily planner. And this planner sadly does not work for me for a work planner anymore with my new job. So I don't know for sure if I'm going to be using this in 2024. If I decide I'm not using it, I will either sell it gift it or do a giveaway with it. But I really adore these planners. Like I really, really love them so much. It's really hard for me to part with it. So I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with it for sure. But that was why I bought it and what its purpose was. And so you guys will find out before the end of the year what I'm doing with this one or what ultimately is happening with this one. But that kind of is what led to me buying this one from Yoseka. So after I bought this one and then I got the Haru planner and I realized this wouldn't be my journal for 2024, I got sad that I wasn't going to be using a take a note planner in 2024 because I really just love these planners. And then I came up with this brilliant idea or what I think is a brilliant idea 
that I could use the A6 and I could actually cut it up and this could go in my A6 ring planner for my weekly spreads in my ring planner. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. Now, I haven't actually done it yet. Well, I have started, but I haven't started using it yet. I'm actually gonna start using it this week, or that's my plan. And so I've actually started cutting up the 2023 that I had, but that's the plan for this one is that this will be deconstructed. And when I say cut up, I'm not really cutting it up. I'm gonna show you in just a second, but because this has an exposed spine, which I love. I love the look of it, but I also love that it just, you know, everything just lays super flat and it's just so nice. But because of that, it's really easy to deconstruct this. And so it's really easy for me to take this apart and then punch holes in it and stick it in my A6 ring planner because it is A6 size. Then I don't have to worry about printables or anything like that. And I have what I need for my ring planner for my on the go planner. So my plan for this is to do this to it. So I've already started. I don't have all of it cut apart, but you know, you can tell almost all of it has been taken out, but all I did was use an exacto and on all the pages, let me find one to show you this. On all the pages where you can see the stitch, I just took my exacto and snipped the stitch and then pulled out the signatures. And so the only thing that I have to do is cut these in half, which will be really, really easy to do, and then punch them and put them in my ring planner. And then I have not only my daily slash weekly spreads, so I'll have this, so I'll have the weekly overview and then a half a page per day as a daily page in my ring planner for what I need them for. I'll also have monthlies and I won't have to print any monthlies for my ring planner. So I really think it's a brilliant idea to allow me to use this amazing planner that I absolutely love, but also get to use my ring planner that I'm loving and not have to do a lot of work. It'll be way easier. Everything will be pre-done and it will be on Tomoe River paper because if I didn't mention it, this is a Tomoe River paper planner, but it's a 68 GSM Tomoe River paper planner, which, oh, just makes my heart sing. I love 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. I love all my Tomoe River paper planners and notebooks, but the 68 is a little bit thicker. And so it holds up to highlighting and pen, all that a little bit easier. And so I just really like how, I just really like how it performs and it feels really nice. It's still white, which I love. So I have to take off the rest. So I have to take out the rest of this. And then what I was thinking I would do is I would punch holes in the cover and then when I'm done with the inserts, I'll just put them back in. And if I need to archive anything, I could archive it all together. If I decide I don't want to archive it, I can just trash it, which is really the point of my ring planner is not to archive, but just in case I do have a way that I could, I do have a way that I could actually archive this, but that's my plan for the A6 size. A5 size has no plan and may not get used and may be given away. We will find out as I work through some final decisions and final planners come in for 2024. But that is the A6 and the A5 planners and my plan for the A6, which I'll be testing out. So you're going to see this in some photos. So make sure you follow me on Instagram because that's where I post more like after the pen photos and before the pen photos. I don't post them in the community tab very often. So make sure you're following me on Instagram at justscribble.yt so you guys can see those because you will see those spreads there. But that's the A6 and the A5. And then this is the B6 size planner. Before I open this up, I did want to say in the description box, I'll put the specs like the grid and all of that stuff down below so that you can see it because the grid for this one, for example, is different than the grid in the A5 and the A6. This one actually is like a very unique grid. It's a four millimeter grid with a two millimeter grid breakdown, which we're going to check out. And so I'll put like the specs and sizing and grid and paper, all that information down in the description box. But this is a JIS size B6. So it's going to be the same size as a B6 from Sterling Inc. That's what this is, or a B6 Stalogy. It is going to be slightly larger than a Wonderland 222 B6. That is an ISO size B6. Let me grab one. So this is a Wonderland 222 B6. And you can see 
that it's a little bit taller and just a little bit wider. So an ISO international standard sizing B6 is about five by seven, whereas these are about by 7.2. So any covers you have that fit like Astology or Sterling Ink, they will fit this as well. It's still an exposed spine. It's still the like thick craft cover. And like I said, it has 2024 sort of embossed there. But this is a new size for them and it's also a new layout. Now, I know some people were not excited about this new layout because they had been wanting a B6 size take a note planner, but they want it in that same schedule style. So they want it in that week on four pages. I am not sure why they didn't make this happen in that style. I also don't know if that's not something they have planned for the future. This actually, this layout is actually different, but this layout is actually a pretty common and sought after layout in the planner community. And so I think that may be why they went with this unique layout, but we will check it out. And then I will show you two other planners that are popular that I know use the same layout. But you have the same card there, and then you have your welcome page it looks a little bit different. It has the same 2024 as the embossing on the front, but in color with the brown and the gray. And then you have your 2024 yearly calendar here with no past year or future year on there. And it is a really clean layout as you can see there. And then it has a slightly different yearly plan. Instead of having two rows with the dates across, it has one place for you to write something and then it has the days. So this would be where you would be able to track like your vacation and holidays. You would just highlight the days and you could label it or you could do one important habit per month that you are wanting to accomplish or one thing that you track all through the year. You could write that there and then you could mark your days there. I actually really like the look of this. And if you can see, it has this two millimeter grid in the background. So it's just really aesthetically pleasing. So this is the A6, just so you can kind of compare. This is what the schedule yearly calendar looks like versus the B6 weekly planners layout. And then this is the yearly plan compared. Let me pull it up closer so you guys can see a little bit better. And then when you flip your page, it looks the same as it does in the A5 and the A6, except for that this has their standard grid, whereas this is in their two millimeter grid, but then it's too high, if you can see that. So even if you have small writing, it goes four millimeter high, but then it has two millimeter grid for those people that write really, really tiny. But it's the same basic layout, but the grid goes all the way around, which I really like the look of that. Whereas on the A5 and the A6, it's white all the way around and this has the grid so it's like a little bit of texture but you have the three months per page and then you have your monthly spread it looks the same but once again it has that two millimeter grid all on it and it looks a little bit more shrunken down so there's a little bit more space around it for writing than you get like on the a5 and the a6 if you can see that but once again, when you get into the months of the actual year, it does have the page numbers for the week and then all the pages are page numbered so you can reference your week. And then the date is a little bit simpler. It's got the one in the January and the 2024 down the side versus in the A5 and the A6, it's a bigger number here. So it takes up a little bit more space. So you go through all your months the end of the year and then you get the same three months for forward planning and then you go into your weekly spread now this is a unique weekly spread but it is not something that's actually new to the planner community i think it's just not something as many people use so this is a vertical memo weekly spread and if you saw my share of the yoseka sampler planner um, I did actually share this that this spread is in that sampler planner because this spread is, I lost my planners, where did I put them? This spread is commonly found in the Nolte planner and in the Tarinko planners from Takahashi. Let me take this plastic off just so that it's easier for you guys to see without some glare. But 
these two planners people love these planners particularly the nolte i actually prefer tarinko planners over nolte planners but the tarinko planners are a little bit harder to find you do have to buy them from amazon japan and they sell out pretty quickly and nolte planners aren't as easy to find either and so i like that take a note has brought this planner style where it's going to be easier to get because it's really easy to go online to take a note or to one of their retailers like Yoseka and order your planner. Now, they don't stay in stock all year round and they will sell out generally, but it is an easier place to get sometimes than searching on Amazon Japan to find a planner and not knowing kind of which one you're searching for to get to the right place. Plus, I actually prefer the like aesthetic of this planner over these two. But this is a vertical memo planner. So what it has is it has a column for each day and still your weekends are brown and your days of the week are gray. And then it's divided into sections, but it's light enough that you could ignore them. And so you have one, two, three sections there and then a little spot above that you can use priorities so you could do morning afternoon evening however you wanted to divide that out and then you have this four millimeter grid that's broken down further into two millimeter depending on how you write how small you write and this is a memo section so you can do anything you want with this you could draw lines and continue these columns down you could divide these up you could do lots of different things um hey planner girl on instagram she used the nolte vertical memo for a long time for work and so she's got some great spreads i'll insert a picture here so you can check one out so this is one of her spreads but if you want some inspiration, she's definitely the person to go to. I will show you some mock-ups that I did as well in the Nolte planner because I had thought about using one of these as my planner for 2023 for my um, everyday carry, but then I used the common planner instead when it came out. But it's a really great spread. There's so many things you could use this planner for. I think it would be really good as a wellness planner, like really, really good because you already have these sort of sections here. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like for food tracking, then you could use this for journaling. You could use this for some other tracking. I just think it's a really nice spread. But one thing that is a little different about this one is it does have your month here down the side and it has the week shaded. Now that's a little bit different and I was trying to think, and I am gonna keep thinking because I'm gonna try to share some ideas with you guys, but I was trying to think of how you would use this. But I think this would be a really good way to do tracking if you had certain things you wanted to track and you could just keep track of them on the different weeks of the month. So say you had four things you track. You track your sleep, you track your water, you track your steps, and you track reading. Then on week one, you could put sleep water steps and reading and then just track for every day of the month on each of those spreads for that specific item and so you could actually see your trends for your sleep and your water and your steps and your reading all in one place but you're still just within the pages of that month and so that's personally probably how i would use it but you could use this for anything that you really wanted to and you could definitely completely ignore this it would be a great place to lay like a thin piece of washi like this and you could just use that as your decor for the spread and nothing else and then match your mild liner or your tombow to the washi and use that to add some highlighting for sections and things but that is the memo spread so i wanted to show you in comparison this is the Tarinko. so one of the things i don't really like about the Tarinko that it doesn't have lines it's a lot of blank space with no line or grid but also the paper is kind of yellow but you will see that the spread is very, very similar. So you have your vertical planning space here and then your memo space here. So it is very similar. Let me lay it next to each other this way. So it is very similar, but slightly different. I much prefer this like aesthetically, but the same kind of idea. And this does come in a couple different versions from them, but all the same kind of basic. Not all of them have these like tabbed pages. And this one is bundled actually. So your month is followed by the weeks of that month and then the next month and the weeks of that month. And so they have a bunch of different planners and a bunch of different styles. I highly recommend, I really like Tarinko planners. And if you like bundled, that's definitely a way to go. And they do come in B6 size. That's what this one is. And then this one is the Nolte. This is also B6 size. And so they have their months with a lot more color, kind of like the Hobonichi Cousin. They are not bundled, so all your months are at the front. And I'm gonna find one that I haven't written on. 
and then this is their memo and then this is their vertical with memo more similar to the take a note style but with a little less space for your vertical and so it has two sections here and then all this memo here so this is kind of how it looks and then i actually did some mock-ups i was trying to figure out how i would use this planner if i used it in 2023 and so this is one of the spreads that i had set up and so up here would be for our events important things that were happening during the day so it was like my parents birthdays and then we had an air show no school tax day recycle day trash day and then i could put my work events here if i needed to dress a certain way or prepare for it and then i divided this into sections so i had a section for each day of the week to have a little day section a place here for my tracker and then this could be for like a weekly overview section this one was slightly different I drew the columns down and I had a place here for daily logs and a place here for priorities and then this would be the same sort of event overview section so I could see what was happening during the day then this layout is kind of the same way as this one with the events here and then the days of the week there. Those are just a few of the ways that I had played with it. But like I said, Hey Planner Girl has like amazing ideas, but I think this is a really great layout. Like I said, I think this is a wonderful planner to use for health and wellness. I think it's perfect for that. I also think it would be a really good social media planner if you were needing a social media planner. If you are on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, you could use each one of these sections to keep track of what you post in each of those. You have a place here where you could keep track of video ideas for the month or keep track of what you've actually posted as far as videos in the month. You can keep your Instagram followers here, your YouTube subscribers on the next week, and so on. And then you'd have all this space to make notes for PR events or video ideas or video notes, all of that. Plenty of space on your monthly to keep track of things like your income that you've earned and your expenses and then places for notes and goals and all of that. So I think this planner could be great for work. It could be great for health and wellness. It could be great for your personal planner. I think it's a really great planner. And then it has the same markings on the sides. So you can find your sections. And then unlike the other ones, this one actually has quite a few pages in the back for notes. They are divided into two millimeter boxes that are then grouped into four millimeter boxes, which are then grouped into larger boxes, as you can see there. And they have dots at the top and the sides at the bottom, so that you can divide into a quadrant, vertical, or horizontal. And then you also have these boxes that just keep getting smaller and smaller. So it's 144, no. So it goes from 146 to 222. It's so about 80 pages in the back. And then your very last page, once again, has your contact information. So that is the B6. So that is my unboxing share review of the Take a Note planners. I adore this planner brand. Oh, that's last year's. I adore this planner brand. It is one of my favorite planner brands of all time. I don't know that I'll be able to not purchase one at any point in the in my planner life now. I just think that they are amazing. I I absolutely love the aesthetic. I think that they are super functional. They look really pretty decorated. If you check out my flip throughs of mine, you can see how they look decorated, even with minimal decor and lots of function. They look really, really pretty. The 68 GSM paper is amazing, especially if you're a person that likes to use gel pens and struggles with 52 GSM paper and the shadowing and all of that. This paper might actually be a really good fit for you. If you have any questions or comments on the Take a Note planners in A6, B6, and A5, please don't hesitate to comment below and I will definitely get back with you. Make sure that you give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. And don't forget to just scribble.